Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at Westfault and happy Friday to all of you guys if you're catching my video. Now, today I was going through on medium.com and I actually found a very interesting, very short article called We Should Have Just Used a Freaking Monolite. And this was written by a guy called Micah or Mike, yep, yep. So, and Mike was basically going through his pain that he had selected a uh, microservices um, architecture, right? And all the problems that was going through with it. So I put the article here and I'll also put it a link down there if you want to read it. It's very short, but he is making some really good points. Now, I'm going to cover a couple of this and then also share my personal experience with microservices and why I always recommend my clients at this moment, always monolite, always. So let's go through the article. So the first thing he talked about is speed. And this is a really, really good point about it. Most of the monolite systems out there in the system, right, belongs to one application, right? So if you're talking about the E2 framework or the Laravel framework, you're just using HTML and PHP, that's it. You know, everything is all together, all in the same place. Everyone will be coding in the same place. Now, that is one of the main things that is speed, speed of how you push out the application, right? Because these things are built to be all composting. So you not don't have to rely on other people or other code to be pushed in before you move on that. So that is one of the benefits that he says, you know, he says a cowboy who just has whiskey neat on the rocks, well, like, you know, just straight up, you know, none of these mixes down there. It is true. If you use an application that's like straight out framework and does not use anything else, you will encounter a lot of speed benefits. And that's one of the main reasons why I ask my clients to use that because speed equals saving money. You know, the longer that your tech guys are working on it, the devs are working on it, it's costing you more money, right? More coffees, more time, more whatever it is. So that's the first thing. This is such a headache for him, right? That he actually says he's going around wearing I like a I love mono like shirt. Now, Micah, if you're watching my video, if you could send me a picture on it, I will be so happy. Uh, look, man, I'll get, send you some P some swag down there. So I would really be interested in seeing that. But let's go to the second issue, which is working with teams. Okay, guys. So this is one of the big issues that uh, you're gonna if you're having microservices, you're gonna have micro teams, and specific people working on certain areas, so they don't clash in there. But Micah's absolutely right. There is miscommunication among the teams. There's a miscommunication in the architecture. That has a lot of tension going through between all the people that are working on a project. Now, I wanna share with you one of the best examples that I myself took over and all the problems that I had and I ended up having to give away that project. Actually, I didn't wanna do it because we were losing money on that project and this could happen to you. So basically, the project involves two kinds of uh, systems. We had a Vue.js front end and a Drupal back end. Now, we came in to replace the team that was doing the Vue.js in the front end and that was our scope, right? But what happened was the client didn't understand. The client was having a lot of tension with their current vendor who was a big firm. They had front end, they had back end, they had database, they had all this kind of stuff. And what was a big problem, right, was that we were supposed to build the front end, but all the requirements, all the user stories that they had, like changing the password, with the, that required some interaction on the back end. That included the uh, working with Drupal. And look, we're PHP shop, I'm a PHP expert, but Drupal is another fish. It's nothing good or bad about it, it just takes a lot of time. And we were only contracted to deliver front end stuff. Client didn't care. Client wanted certain applications, they didn't care how it was done. But we ran into a lot of trouble. We would build the front end stuff, we would have to wait for the back end to be created. They were pushing back on the back end. There was a lot of questions of how a particular software was done. We wanted it more back-end loaded because it was more secure. They wanted it more front-end loaded. It was a mess. The Drupal itself was really badly configured. It was a headless system and it was overly complex. As Drupal has a certain standard that has to be followed. It's very tight and they had actually opened it into a custom stuff so that it could be handled with the Vue.js. But this is where the tension and the problem comes in, right? 
you have different amounts of code that can overlap in the different microservices. You could have more work being done by the database, you could have more work do being done by the application middleware for, uh, factor, or you can even push it into the front end these days. And all the things, all the people who are working there will be jostling around, they'll be playing politics, they'll be pushing around, they may have different levels of skill set. And this is where you can end up in a real mess. So you have, let's say, a very strong front-end team, right? We prefer most of the stuff coming into the front-end, but they want to stay back from the security stuff because they can't control that. The back-end guys are starting to load up the front-end stuff or they're being very slow. So you get a very good progress, but you can't build those APIs. So you have to build a lot of testing stuff. You have to simulate the, the, the APIs and they might not be done properly. And that's what the kind of stuff that we were running into. You know, we wanted an API done in this way. We give the specs, those guys couldn't do it or did it wrongly. We come back to us, both sides start blaming each other for where the breakdown begins. This is where you will also experience this in terms of your teams, right? You have a front end person and a back end person. Front end people like to be in the front end. They like nice designs. They like worrying about it. The back end people want to just look at you know, the command line interfaces. So this causes this, all these problems. It slows your project down. It makes hiring extremely difficult because for a simple job, you're going to need a front end guy and a back end guy. And if you split that more, right, you add a database layer, you add some sort of other services, right? This can be a four or five person application and everybody just doing a small part of the overall application, racking up the cost, racking up your time. So that's what Micah was actually experiencing. That's why he likes Monolite. Personally, I look at the application and try to solve it from a delivery standpoint. What are you trying to achieve with the front end? What are you trying to achieve with the back end? Can a Monolite do that? And a lot of people are very surprised that the, within the application itself, PHP handling both sides of it. Remember, it can be a template engine and it can be a backend engine. The same person can be working on both, uh, both sides of the, uh, the delivery and you can have one person actually pushing out a certain line of code. So in most circumstances, right, unless you're building a, you know, I would say a $1 billion company plus, if you haven't encountered the problem that needs a microservices solution, I would, uh, I would avoid it entirely. Okay, guys, so let's just freaking use a monolite. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.